Welcome to Smellomania, a perfume review channel where I draw what perfumes smell like to me. Except this time will be different, it will be the other way around. Exactly half a year ago, during the winter holidays, I've discovered a tiny red envelope hiding under the Christmas tree. It was a gift from my husband. I opened it carefully, hoping not to disturb the contents of the wrapping. It said, create your own perfume, and tiny letters underneath stated, you may do so in our studio, which is located in Grasse. Grasse, a small town in France, happens to be the cradle of the whole perfumery as we know it. So I just couldn't fly to a perfume studio in France empty-handed. I had to bring a drawing of my favorite things with me. Favorite thing number one. Space. I've always been passionate about night photography and capturing the glowing vastness of space. We have even created lamps made from glowing crystals together with my husband, only to satisfy the thirst for the magical and the unknown. Until one day I decided to fool all our followers into thinking that we harvest the lamps from other planets. One thing led to the other and I suddenly found myself constructing a spacesuit. And that's me living my dream of traveling the cosmos and encountering glowing crystal colonies. And here's my husband pretending to be harvesting our handmade lamps in another galaxy. Then my interstellar fantasies got out of hand when I convinced him to fly to Iceland and pose for a few shots. Of course, I had to bring not only my photography gear, but also the whole spacesuit topped with a helmet, which wouldn't fit so easily into any regular suitcase. But it was worth it, wasn't it? Let's get back to the perfume. Favorite thing number two. Fresh fruits. And to spice everything up, why not add something odd to the mix? Since I'll be taking this perfume concept with me to grass, I must make sure to be as clear as possible, as I'm giving myself absolute freedom. For this project, I wanted to draw something cosmic, something fresh and fruity and slightly odd. Why not an astronaut enjoying a stellar beverage? I sketched a few options, debated with myself a little bit, and finally settled on a cosmic liquid of existence. Now what should be the mood of the perfume I'm going to create? I want it to feel fresh and juicy, maybe a bit weird, but not overly long-lasting, since I tend to get tired quickly from beastly performance. What if it was slightly alcoholic, zesty, and just a bit sweet? Oh, and fizzy and bubbly, of course, like a real cosmic lemonade. I then fantasized about the notes my future perfume could contain. Something citrusy for sure, perhaps a touch of my beloved rhubarb, and maybe some mouth-watering black currants. What if it had some spicy ginger and that sparkling fizzy sensation from lemonade or champagne? Maybe a touch of dry and grounding woodness? and perhaps some flirty sweetness from cotton candy? I couldn't believe the fact that I'll be going to France to create my own perfume. Not only going, but also bringing my secret wishes and my artwork together with me. How will they react? Will there be someone to help me, or will I be left on my own among thousands of tiny smelly bottles? Will we be able to recreate the smell that's lingering in my imagination? Or will it be a complete reckless improvisation based on immediate likes and dislikes? Let's find out. Let's fly to grass. And finally we're here. But first, we need a montage. A montage of visiting the beach in Nice. 
exploring local flora and fauna. Smelling, observing, and tasting everything. Yes, even the snails. <laughs> Besides the pretty natural sites, we also visited the International Perfume Museum in Graz. There were some charming bottles, some torture devices, an original Chanel number no. 5 vial, and even Angel. A chair covered completely with petite flowers. A wall of holy blotters. And many other things. Then we got back to the countryside and got a little lost in the beauty of French Riviera. Little did we know that we came down to the cons exactly the same day like Tom Cruise to premiere his newest Top Gun blockbuster. He was just around the corner somewhere, or so we'd like to believe. <laughs> no wonder that even some unidentified flying objects decided to appear that night above cans. Now let's get back to the Calamar studio. I was gifted an haute couture perfume creation workshop experience here in Grasse. Upon the first glance, I was mesmerized by the abundance of tiny brown glass bottles and wanted to smell every single one. I found the marking of the notes exceptionally amusing. More masculine bass notes were tagged with a pair of shorts. <laughs> Feminine heart notes were represented by a nice cleavage, and more feminine bass notes were marked with a classic skirt. But I'm not too sure I could agree to this, that iris, patchouli, vetiva or sandalwood is only a feminine leaning bass note. Nor would I agree to the marking that fig, jasmine, ginger or bamboo is a masculine heart note. I believe it's more of a classic approach, or just make things a bit easier for basically anyone entering the perfume world for the very first time. Tomato leaf. It smells like tomato leaf. Exactly like a tomato leaf. Then I presented my drawings and ideas to my master perfumer, the helping nose behind this project, Yusuke. And to my surprise, he noted that seeing that cosmic drawing and some other colorful scribbles was actually very helpful. We started the perfume creation process from the base notes and built our way up. Yusuke picked out a dozen of base notes for me to choose from, all according to my drawing, and I could pick up to six different ones. I won't lie, it was a difficult process. Everything smelled really appealing. You create, for example, bouquet. It means lily of the berry. And we can't uh, this way. We can't mm -hmm. get the essential oil because the flower is too delicate. So, mm -hmm. so we we recreate the smell mm -hmm. with uh, um, raw material, synthetic. So every bottle here we. Mm -hmm. Then Yusuke poured my choices into the glorious vial, mixed it all up and all three of us headed outside for an evaluation. So, so we are smelling the middle notes yes, with, base note. ba with base note? Together. Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, also mixed together with the air of France here. <laughs> yes, exactly. We had to cast. Air of cast. And now I'm 
picking the top notes. Wow, many difficult decisions. I mean, everything smells so good on its own, but how will it mix, I wonder? My husband suggested I name the final product Ten Forward. When it finally settled, I told Vitens that it smelled like a combination of perfumes, like some people gathered in some room for a party. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally back home from my studio. Here's the magical liquid I brought home from France. They also mixed some shower gel for me with the same aroma. When Yusuke handed it over to me, the bottle was still hot. Hot shower gel, can you imagine that? And the final product they gave me is body lotion. It has the same smell that me and my master perfumer have created. It was exciting to see how the same smell unfolded in different products. The body lotion seemed to accentuate the top notes the most. Therefore, it felt the most citrusy. The shower gel felt the most masculine of all three. And the perfume? The main thing felt... Let me introduce you to the notes I chose for this perfume. I brought this little piece of paper with me with some imaginary notes I wanted to smell in my perfume. Rhubarb, blackcurrant, lemonade, maybe even cotton candy. So what did I end up with in reality? Yuzu, a citrusy note that I liked. Cassis, also known as blackcurrant, of course. Lotus flower, red pepper and rosemary. Now for the hot notes, I chose neroli, fig, ginger, tiare flower, a high concentration of prunes and a dash of ocean notes just to reflect the vastness of space in my drawing. The base notes are sandalwood, cotton candy, floral musk, pinch of ambroxan, I also wanted my perfume to smell trendy, and some patchouli. Then I took my perfume out on a romantic and contemplative walk. Went to an intimate beach just for two. Gazed upon the sunset. Do you also take your perfume bottles out for a walk? <laughs> no? <laughs> I was just trying to figure out what my creation smells like to me. It does feel a bit seductive due to its soft sweetness and a dash of spiciness. It made me think that it's more for going out, less for office. The smell has this feeling that the person wearing it would be hard to get. But there was one side effect. The perfume did make me sneeze. Maybe there was something among the ingredients? Something that agitated my sense of smell just a little bit? When I've spent more time with it, it started reminding me of something. It smells more like a room scent or a nice candle. It felt exceptional, but not for a person, perhaps. My creation kind of starts like a vintage masculine clone. This may be due to that aggressive citrusy yuzu and ginger. And then it turns into a feminine vintage classic. It's truly quite complex and definitely on the heavier side. It doesn't have a strong character though, but somehow doesn't end up being generic. And definitely it's a bit weird, just like I wanted it to be. The name that my husband came up with for my fragrant creation is Ten Forward. There's the starship in Star Trek called USS Enterprise. And the very front of the craft is the location of the Ten Forward Lounge. Since the smell came out to be quite vintage, such an old-school connection seemed quite suitable. And most importantly, the name is space-related, just like my original concept drawing. What if my perfume could be the smell of their interstellar lounge? A bit weird, a bit sweet and zesty. I then quickly sketched my final idea for the perfume I created in grass. It smells like a lounge area inside a monumental starship crowded by various alien species. I then grabbed myself a black piece of paper and tried a somehow lazy but highly effective approach to draw the light only. 
so I portrayed a Starship lounge packed with alien life forms. They're all ready for a classy night at the bar, gazing into the vastness of space. The lounge always smells like this, a bit vintage, but still otherworldly and classy. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the other one the next week. Bye!